Hey everybody, I'm Will Scott. Thanks for tuning in and you're watching Graveyard Cars. <laughs> This time on Graveyard Cars, Mark and Royal take an off-road trip down memory lane when they fire up their old friend's Dodge Power Wagon. Nothing wrong with this old truck. Dave keeps up the pace, making more headway on the nearly complete 446 barrel Phantom Cuda, the car that started it all. What an epic moment for Graveyard Cars. Yeah. Mark makes the announcement of a top secret project, Operation Firepower. It's a big project. I really can't go into a whole lot on it. With a rock hard deadline and challenges they have never faced before, the ghouls are gonna have to up their game. I have to have it at SEMA this year. That's about four months. Alyssa teams up with Will to surprise her dad with the ultimate Father's Day surprise, his first Mopar. We would like to present to you. Yeah. Your car. Your car. That you had in high school. Oh my gosh, look at that. Coming up. <laughs> on this episode of Graveyard Cars. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that the Cranberry Dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman, and together we bring dead muscle cars back to life, to exactly the way they were on the day they were born. In the unlikely event that you didn't catch the last episode of Graveyard Cars, here's what you missed. Will painted and helped Dave assemble the very intricate grill for our 71 446 barrel Phantom Cuda. Alyssa got trained and certified as an official GYC Stringo operator, just barely. After numerous spray outs, buffings, comparisons, and a ton of research, Mark and Will settled on painting the General Lee Freeway jump car its original movie color, AMC's Big Bad Orange, which is still technically Mopar. And in an effort to fire up, motivate, and lead the body shop to newly hoped for greatness, Mark moved his mammoth toolbox right next to Will's workspace, then promptly got distracted, giving Will ample opportunity to relocate Mark's monolith to a more convenient locale. All right, we got Larry here from Larry's Interiors, and he's uh, doing the headliner on our Phantom Cuda. So it's really cool, uh, he gets to come in and work on that piece of history. Try to lay out the headliner for him, hopefully at least a week ahead of time, so either it just kind of takes all the wrinkles out of it. We lay it on top of another car's roof, uh, so it'll get nice and warm and kind of lay out flat. Uh, yeah, the headliner came out fantastic. Uh, Larry does a great job, as he always does. Uh, it's always nice and tight, and uh, the seams look fantastic. And yeah, I, don't, I never have to worry about his work. You know, once it's in there, it's in there, and it's done right. Numero uno, wow. Hey, hey boss. Just oh, in time. Time to come out. Look at that. Just buzzing through the shop, uh, catching up with Dave out here. He's been working on the Phantom Cuda. Phenomenal job, by the way. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, I haven't had a chance to be out here hardly at all. As you notice, I've been upstairs cleaning the parts room, out, outside in the machine shop. So things are getting away from me a little bit, but it's nice to know he's in charge because this thing is looking freaking gorgeous. Is this the AMD tinted? Yep, AMD tinted glass. Boy, they fit or... nice. It they does. Got it's the got a really nice on it. to it. So what is the Phantom Cuda? The Phantom Cuda is the moniker ascribed to the 1971 446 barrel Cuda that effectively started the Graveyard Car series. On July 5th, 1981, the owner of the Cuda was racing some friends on an old country road. At over 100 miles per hour, he lost control of the car and crashed. Despite totaling the vehicle, the driver miraculously walked away with nothing more than a ripped pair of jeans. After the Cuda's fatal crash, it sat for nearly 25 years, rusting, rotting, and being picked clean for its valuable donor organs. 
Then, in 2007, one of Mark's clients purchased the remains of this ultra-rare fish for $50,000. That's right, $50,000. Knowing the rarity of the vehicle, one of only 108 made, and Mark's reputation of resurrecting the most hopeless of dead cars, the new owner took a chance on bringing this once beautiful Cuda back from the dead. When Mark accepted the challenge of bringing this mangled, sparse shell of a car back to life, the internet keyboard commandos screamed rebody. Which, when you look at the condition of the car when he started, one might easily draw that same conclusion. However, while the illegal practice of taking the vehicle identification numbers from one car and putting them on another is certainly painless and the path of least resistance, it is not how Mark Warman restores Mopars. In order to prove the validity of this restoration and all of the painstaking steps involved, Mark reached out to a friend to document the process. That one simple action of recording the restoration led to a snowball effect that resulted in the TV series Graveyard Cars. So, with nearly a decade of stretching, dipping, metalwork, engine work, body, paint, and now assembly, this legendary car is nearly ready for the next leg in its epic journey. It's looking good. Got one door panel on. Wow. Just got to finish screwing it down. And oh, yeah, I mean, we're real close on the interior. Wow. All I got to do is set the carpet, get the heater box in there, and we'll be ready How for nice the How nice is that? Boy, Larry did a good job on that headliner. That is nice. You got your garnish moldings in. This is a no yep. rear speaker car, so it got the blank. Yep. Yeah, we're all ready for Quarter the back Quarter trim class. panels look good. Legendary seats look awesome. Wow, it just looks so good. Yeah, it's looking great. Every single car that we're doing, I notice, gets better and better every single yeah. time. I mean, you would not believe that's the same car no. that we drug in eight years ago. It is just, it's not just beautiful and it's not just great parts, but you're doing a good job putting it together. He's really been moving along well, really well on the car. It's farther along than I thought that it was. What an epic, 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 epic moment for Graveyard Cars. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, no, that's well, cool. Good job, buddy. Thanks. Our 1971 Demon is getting ready to go off to the Dipper. This is a really cool car. Now, this particular car is from the Midwest. It's a 1971 Demon, 344 speed. So they made 2,051 of those. Very rare car. But on top of that, this one is a documented, highly documented, original Mr. Norm's car. So what they did was they took these cars, moved them over to Mr. Norm's, and Mr. Norm would soup them up. Norman Krauss also known as Mr. Norm, started Grant Spalding Dodge in Chicago with his brother Lenny. Mr. Norm specialized in performance Dodge cars, leading the charge into the muscle car era with a Mr. Norm Sport Club and some truly game-changing modifications. Famous for their GSS, Grand Spalding Special modifications, when Dodge's engineers said something couldn't be done, Mr. Norm showed them how. Mr. Norm was the first to develop the 383 1967 Dart and the 440 1968 Dart. Both promptly became prototypes for Dodge. But sadly, as the muscle car era subsided in 1973, the dealership took a hit. Mr. Norm sold his ownership in Grand Spalding Dodge in 1977. The dealership closed in the late 1980s. Fortunately, Mr. Norms lives on, with parts and even the sport club available online. When Mr. Norms took the 340, which was not available with a six-pack in 1971, it was only available on the TA Challenger and the AAR in 1970, he still wanted to make it three two barrels. Well, he could have gone to Dodge in 71 and bought them because they were over the counter. The problem was they were too much money to buy from Dodge. So at the end of the day, when Mr. Norm put one of these cars out, he had kind of a potpourri of parts. He had the 340, which is the original numbers matching 340 in them. Then he put Chevrolet carburetor, Chevrolet version Holly carburetors on it and topped it all off with a Ford Tri-Power air cleaner, which he happens to have the original one on. This is a really cool finned aluminum piece that if you pop the hood and looked, you'd say, well, was that a Ford? Because you had that. And then you look at the carburetor number and you say it's a GM. But all the time, it was the cheapest way for Mr. Norm to be able to put out a Demon with a 340 and a six pack on it. So some people call them 340 Tri-Powers because General Motors called their 3-2 barrel setup Tri-Powers and so did Ford. 
When this car came into us, the body panels were on it, but the engine and transmission were already out of it. Uh, the rear end was also out of it. But yeah, if you look the car over, if you comb it, you'll see that that apron's already been replaced once. You can tell by the, the plug welds that have been done along the bottom of it. A lot of rust starting to come through in different areas. The main floor here, you'll see, is completely gone. And we're down to the frame rail, which is also rotted out. So all of that'll need to be replaced. The original engine and transmission, we brought those around and they're sitting over here on our uh, engine prep area. This is the area that right before we get ready to disassemble an engine and work on it, they go over there, the staging area. So we do have the original numbers matching engine over there ready to disassemble. The transmission is back at Brewers getting built right now as we speak. And this is heading off to the dipper. Oh, you in here making coffee? No, Getting I'm ready working. Getting my coffee? I'm working right now. No coffee? No coffee. What are you working on? Maybe here in a little bit. Um, I'm working, I'm emailing John back about my dad, the die cast car, oh, 1972. Nice. Did you hear anything about that? No. You have to see this, this is pretty cool. Okay, so a few weeks ago, one of our fans named John got in contact with us about doing a die cast model car for my dad. I just thought it would be really cool to do a car for you because you guys are Mopar people, and I'm a Mopar guy, and the fact that he hasn't been able to find the real car, his real charger, that doing a die-cast version of it would be like the next best thing. It's the charger he got when he was 16. It's the one car that he wishes he never sold, so I think it's just a perfect idea for John to make it into a die-cast model car. So he bought this model car, it's the RT charger. His wasn't an RT. Exactly. So what he's doing <laughs> is... You're already ready for me, weren't you? <laughs> So what he's doing is he's having to do, basically, restore it. Isn't that crazy? Does he build all these? Does he build like a bunch that yeah, he sells? Yeah, yeah, he has, owns a business. So this oh. is what that's what it basically started out like, and he's starting to take it apart. Mm -hmm. That's the inside. That's actually a lot of work for a model. Yeah, now that's what it looks like. Isn't that cool? That's actually pretty cool. He's like the Mark Warman of you... the diecast world. Yeah, so I'm gonna give it to my dad for Father's Day. And that's a good like idea. It. So I'm gonna put it in the car trailer. I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to put it in the car trailer, I'm going to bring my dad out and open it up, give it to him for Father's Day. Okay, well, that's a great idea. Don't you think I it's going to be it. awesome? It's going to be great. <laughs> Are you going to be out there too? I'm getting you involved in this. Don't, it's not going to be like the car situation, <laughs> <Yeah>. Will, <laughs> where you open the gate and you, come on, I don't want to go by myself. No, you're fine. Come on. No, just go. Will, I'll, I'll cover for uh, Will. Uh, what are you going to say? What are you, how you Then you ran to the store real quick because it's 100 degrees. You're thirsty. You ride my car. She's in the orange car. Why? I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> you tell me you're going to go with me, and then all of a sudden, oh, it's the fan, and you had nothing to do with any of it. I don't like that. Cool. Yep. The coffee stand is five feet in front of you. So if you can get that knocked out, that would be awesome. And I'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> no problem. Where did my email go? Uh, what we got here is our 1971 Phantom Cuda heater box. So we got this from Tony's. Got our rebuild kit here from OER. What I'm gonna do is I'm basically just gonna take it outside because it's filthy and I'm gonna clean it as a unit and then I'll go ahead and disassemble it. Boy, that baby looks pretty good. <sighs> As you can see, the door is really rusty, so that's obviously got to be addressed. Hopefully, whenever we get it all cleaned up, it's not rusted all the way through, because then it's garbage, and we'll have to replace that door. We'll probably end up replacing this whole piece right here. Uh, so the way this one here works is you got to drill out these rivets, pull this whole piece off, sandblast all that, then you re-rivet it back on there. But a lot of work goes into just this one little piece. There's supposed to be foam all the way around all these doors and stuff that kind of insulate it inside the heater box. And you can see this is just gone. A lot of these here, you can see these pins start to get rusted down so far. 
that they get so weak that they're just gonna snap. This door right here is junk, because you can see the whole corner of it's missing. So this is no good. Here's our heater core, of course. That's obviously junk, we'll replace that. We replace them all. But I'll just disassemble the whole body of it, clean it all up. You can see inside of here. Even though I washed it, it's got mouse and droppings and stuff in there. It's not so bad, it's not packed full of a, of a nest like we see in a lot of them. Yeah, we got our heater box all disassembled. It looks actually pretty decent. I mean, you gotta figure this thing's probably 47, 48 years old. Main concern of the whole heater box is this unit right here, this body. This is the most important piece because this is what you can't replace. And all in all, it looks fantastic. So just from right, this piece right here, I can build a brand new heater box. Let's get all our new foam on from our rebuild kit from OER and it'll be brand new. So can't wait to get her done and get her in the car. So in the booth, I have our Roadrunner, which is being converted over to a Superbird clone. I have it in the booth. We have body worked the roof, quarter panels, installed the new back window that it takes, and I'm getting ready to start priming it. So since they got the body work done, I went ahead and primed the back end. And while that's curing, they'll go ahead and start the body work on the front. So by the time we're ready to primer the front, the back's ready to sand. I'm kind of excited about doing this car because even though it's not a true Superbird, it's the first Superbird that I've got to do. So that is kind of exciting for me. But outside of that, it's pretty much like the rest of them that come through here, except it's got a big wing. Yeah. What's up, boss? Now, if it isn't the boldest guy in town. No. While you were out playing house, changing locks at the school district, I finished all the things on Chubb's old truck. Oh, did you? Which he's truck. Oh, cool. It is ready for the Tour de Springfield. The Tour de Springfield. The Another one? Full circle. You want to go for a ride, boss? Yeah, let's go. fire up old yellow? 440 <laughs> cubic inches of fire breathing nightmare. Nice. What do you think? Take a look. Nice. Recently, I, uh, I had an opportunity to purchase a vehicle that was kind of part of both the Royal Nye's childhood, a uh, 76 Dodge three-quarter ton pickup. Uh, it belonged to a guy named Butch Peterson. The very first Mopar I ever owned was because of Butch Peterson. Still looks well, the same. For the, yeah, well, you were here for the scrub up, but see the windshield? Remember how fogged it was across the top and the bottom? Oh, yeah. 33, 12, 5, 16, fives. Oh, wow. These, nobody makes these anymore, but these were you set on Craigslist, a set of really? Wildcats. Yep. I mean, look at that. I that always... fills it up nice. It looks, I think it, it just it, makes it look really cool. Makes it look mean. Here, let me fire it up. I guess that's all that matters is what Stand we out thought, there and right? To this. <laughs> Those are glass packs, baby! <laughs> Butch's truck was around in my life from the time I was about 15 years old on through today where I'm 54 years old. Now that sound. I love it. I think Butch's mufflers were a lot quieter. I don't remember being that loud. All right, let's see what we got here. Right now I got it in just regular high. What do you think? Go out oh, and see you if have the... four wheel? I haven't. I mean, it's full-time four wheel, but I haven't locked it in. What do you think? Oh. Want to try it? Yeah, give it a try. Let's, let's put That'll around it work. once in regular and see how it does. second year already. That's crazy. Now, you remember he used to put that thing oh. on, lock it, and he'd get up to 40 miles an hour like that. That's a nice tiny. old truck, though. What's wrong with that old yeah. truck? <laughs> Ouch. That hurt my neck. That works all right, doesn't it? Yep. I don't have any grandioso plans for it other than just to know it's mine and, and have it and keep it. <laughs> That's good stuff right there, right now. I love yeah, it. Yeah, still drives good. 
I've been driving old rig. It's nothing wrong with this. We got to party in this thing a little bit. But really, for the most part, other than that, it drove really great. And so I just think we keep it the way it is and run it and drive it. I love that sound. That's cool. It's just it? too cool. That's going to alert every cop within three, four miles. <laughs> That's loud. That Jeez. is loud. Yeah, it is. Good. Pay back these bastards on their motorcycles. How'd they like to be sitting there trying to have a hey, civil hey, conversation? Hey, hey, hey. Loud pipes save lives. No, f Yeah. No. They, do. they sure as f don't help Trust my ears. Me. Ah, fully on you. What do you think, Rolo? Go in and get a big glug for the old days? Big gulp of Pepsi? I changed from my Dr. What? Pepper days to Diet Pepsi, Diet Pe Coke. Pepsi and popcorn, please. And a hot mama. Remember them? Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah, those are great. Those are great for belches. We just got our dash in uh, from Instrument Specialties for our 71 Phantom Cuda. Uh, this is great news. Uh, usually it's always we're waiting on the dash, and this time the dash is actually waiting on me. Oh, uh, look at that, huh? Wow, it's beautiful. I love it. Looks great. And it's a non-rally. Everybody's so used to a rally dash, if you kind of flip it that way, you can kind of see a non-rally. It's got the, the big speedometer and all the other smaller gauges when the rally dash you know has the wood grain and all the individual gauges on there so that's pretty cool to see a non-rally or the 446 barrel car so totally cool instrument specialties does a great job you know looking over the dash it's just fantastic uh, their paint work bright work uh, all the gauges and everything just look fantastic here we got our ash tree kind of tip that up a little bit there they do a beautiful job on the ash tree they refinish everything in there you know it's got a new cigar lighter cigarette lighter Right here, we got our reverse light. So, you know, when you shift the transmission, reverse that'll light up and it'll say reverse on it. Then, of course, you got your glove compartment, you know, and which is really cool. They got the keys in there for the lock and everything, and it's all new inside there. You know, this one here doesn't have a, a glove compartment light. It's pretty basic model. And then, of course, your beautiful Barracuda, you know, logo on there. So it's awesome. And this is just a single speaker, one speaker on the top. This is just fantastic. You know, on the dash here where it says Barracuda, even though this car here is a Cuda, you know, it says Cuda on the door panels on the Cuda models, but it always says Barracuda on the dash no matter what the model was of the car. So it just probably made it easier for them to, uh, to build out the dashes from the factory. So really cool. But yeah, just beautiful job as always. And yeah, I can't wait to get it in there. All we really need right now, uh, as far as the dash going in, is the, is the heater box. Uh, I got it all restored, all rebuilt. Uh, it's just three bolts and a J-hook to actually hold it in there. Uh, a couple cables, you know, to run the, the defroster and the heater controls. And then I just got a speedometer cable and it's uh, ready to drop that dash in. All right, well, we got our dash here. Ready to install it in our Phantom Cuda. This will be the first one that you've done, so. I know, I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, you've about got all the grounds covered now. I mean, suspension, interior. It's, it's not too bad. I'll kind of show you inside the car here. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward putting the dash in. There's like two bolts on the bottom and hooks in and four on the top. A lot of times swinging it up there, it's gonna fight you, you know, because the frames are a little tweaked or something, but we'll do the best we can to get it in. And so I'll take this in, you got that in. So we'll have all kinds of wires hanging down. So I'm gonna go around this way. There you go. Just watch the door there. there go. And if you get tired or you need to set it down, let me know. Hey. They didn't have that strip club back then either. No. That was Sizzler back then. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, Butch's house is still there. Yep. Looks a little nicer these days. Yep. That's a cute little house. This is about where old Butch parked the truck too, isn't it? Yep. Because he had his Torino right there too. Yep. Boy, it's been a long time ago. This is where our friend Butch uh, lived when we met him back in probably, what, 78? 
Yeah. Lived here with his dad. His dad ran a flower shop right down here on Main Street called Springfield Flowers. And Butch did the deliveries. And he had two rigs he did the deliveries in. One was a Dodge truck. The other one was a 72 uh, Gran Torino. Kind of like the one from uh, Gran Torino with Eastwood. He was a nice guy. My charger sat right there where those arborvitas are. So it was facing this way. And this big tree, I think, which is a maple tree, had just covered the car in soot and debris and, and leaves and. Well, yeah, the leaves, rotting leaves were like that thick on there. So when I, when I saw the car, I was standing on the top of that staircase, kind of gazing this way all the way over. And I saw, I thought was a black charger with a black top. Knocked on the door and that's when I met Butch. He was, oh. I said, would you be willing to sell the car? I think I was 15. Yeah. It took me a year and a half to save up for it. I remember coming with you to get it. Oh yeah, you, you came right down here and we got right in the car right there and we drove it out of here, no driver's license. No, I did have my license when we drove it. Yeah. I just got it. This is our beginning of the Mopar thing. Butch would drive that truck down and sit out there and idle in the alley until I came out. Yeah, nowhere to go. He'd sit right there eating snacks. He'd idle, idle for 10 minutes. In your driveway. Eating corn nuts. <laughs> corn nuts. Which was great. And doctor, no, root beer. Corn nuts and root beer. Anyway, what do you say we make one trip down the alley for nostalgia's sake? Oh, not again. See if we can wake up some neighbors. We had a lot of fun in it when Butch was around. He was a nice guy. He was a nice man. And he's really the reason I got as heavily into Mopar as I did, I believe. It's the only good part about a convertible. The harness. Is I can stand up the whole time. Oh yeah. Yeah, I always love working with Dave because it's not working with my dad and my dad's not around, so I always look forward to working with you. It's a little bit less stressful of an environment and, you know, less kind of BS, kind of straight to the point. Okay. There you go, you got it? Got it. Okay. Already sweating. You doing okay, Alex? Yeah, Sing. whoa, why are you that close to me, Dad? I just wonder how I heard all this sliding this and slipping that and just wondering how you're doing there. Doing yeah. good. Okay. That frame's all bent. Doing really good. Where was he? Was he hiding behind those? Where the I heck was he? It's like he knew what we were doing and he was just waiting, you know, know. for us to get it like halfway in there. So over there. Alright, now swing yes. it toward down. Okay. Down a little lower. I'm gonna try to unless the boss wants to hook up speedometer cable. I can do that. We were able to get it loosened up, get it slid back into place, get it bolted in, so all in all it went pretty good. I yeah, thought, I think you know. I think it went as good as it could have. I, I feel like there's always, you know, little things that you can account for when you go into this. So how about that? Look at that. All right. Nice. Make sure you put all yeah. the screws in the holes. Oh well, yeah. Okay. Uh, the priming is all complete. I put four coats on it, body work, they did a great job on it. So now they're able to focus their attention on the front and we're moving right along on the car. Well, we're off the bolt. Huh? I was pushing it. Yeah, you pushed it off of there? Yeah, I didn't think it would slide off. Can you get it back on? Because other than that, I gotta pull that bolt out and pull the whole dash back out. Yeah, I got out. it. You get it? Yeah. That looks pretty good. It's on the bolt. Is it on the bolt? Yep. Perfect. It's good. Now what you wanna look at is our wiring here. Uh, what's next is just basically plug and play. I kind of showed you all the little clips and everything that are marked. So we just gotta kind of get all the door switches hooked up, all the bulkhead and everything installed, but Make sure you like look underneath there, it's not pinched. There's yeah. nothing underneath of it, right? No. No wiring? No, there's okay, nothing perfect. I can see. Nope. Cool. Yeah. Well, there you go. How's it look? Looks great. Oh, yeah, it looks awesome. Nice work. But this right here says heater box. This here is all your speaker wires for your radios. Here we got our vent cables, all that's got to screw onto the bottom. This right here is called our bulkhead. This little light on the dash. You can see it says parking brake. 
you got another door switch. And then this right here says high beam switch, a rear lighting, reverse light, fuel gauge, all that stuff. Then these are just accessories. And then this one right here, this pink and this white one, mm -hmm. I don't think they have it marked, but this is your brake light switch. And then we got a really cool car bear here for our shaker bubble. I think that it would be really difficult to, you know, unless you've worked on them a million times, figure out where each of those wires go because there's about a million of them under there. So that's wow, cool. it's so, coming along. It's almost done. Yeah, so all we need now is our steering column and then we can throw the seats in there. So and that'll finish off the interior, so it's cool. Yeah, I mean, we're really close. I mean, once we get this grill and this front end in here, it's basically going to be a, a car. You know, I mean, com pretty well complete. So I'm excited uh, of how close we've come and got a few more things to put in and like you said, we'll be going for a ride in it. So that's gonna be cool. Awesome, right? Good job. Thank you. I'll see you later. All right. What's happening, sweetheart? Hey, just making you a coffee. Are you really? Yeah. What do you got? I got a package for you. Really? Yes. Who's it from? I think I know, but I don't know for sure. You're gonna have to well, open let's it. Open up. it. Yep. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Ah, he even did the GYC license plate. Did you really? Did you see that? My dad's gonna love that. Oh, that's very cool. So this is the car. This is his old car. You know what he did in the back seat of that car? Mm -hmm. Had a lot of cheeseburgers. <laughs> well, I don't want him to see it, so I'm gonna put it back in the box, but you know, it's really hard for me to find a gift or to even think of a gift for my dad because he kind of already has it all. Very cool. cool. Okay, well thanks. You're welcome. I finally feel like I have a great gift for Father's Day for my dad, so I'm pretty excited. I mean, can't beat this. This is awesome. I think that he'll be really surprised that, you know, that we thought of this. Mark gathers up the ghouls to talk about a very important upcoming project. All right, here's the dealio. Here's the dealio. What's a, what's a scenario? What's that? Who's that rapper? First of all, I'd like to apologize ahead of time for what I'm about to say. Michael, I'm very sorry. Sorry about all the <laughs> insults I've given you in the last year. I take them all back and I own them. So you need something. <laughs> yes, I okay. need something. Dave, as always, you're number one. I appreciate everything that you do. Thanks, Will, sir. you're the best painter in the country. <laughs> Alyssa, you, oh, thank you. <laughs> God. On the other side of the door is a project. It's a big project. I really can't go into a whole lot on it other than to say it is a very, very important thing that we make this mark and I need to, I have to have it about four months. So I'd like to introduce you to the car, what needs to be done to it, and let us get started by disassembling it. Where? No. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> no. No, I know that Let's sounds like it's a lot to do. It sounds like there's oh, a lot. Oh, to do the touch-ups and then put it back together? I'm yeah. going to open the door oh. and show you what car it is. Kind of surprising because you've had your hand on this car already. Oh, so it should be perfect. Yeah, exactly. Woo-hoo-hoo. <laughs> 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 hey. A little Woody Woodpecker there. Very special, very special little trick coming up. <laughs> See how I did that? I just kind of timed myself at the door. Where's it at? All right, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. 1971. Which one? That's this. Oh, you're going too far. Oh. Oh, wow. 1971 Cuda. Will, do you remember this car? Actually, you know what I do. What do you remember about it? You know, it's your car. Yep. Um, it used to be in the back lot where it was all gravel. I used a chain and I maybe your vet at the time to pull. Uh, ooh. Viper? No, Viper. Vet. It was vet. <laughs> no, I never. Is Mark did own a 1975 Corvette. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. He got a good deal on it. It's not like he was Which out. That's why I bought it. Can I finish? Yep. All right. It's not like he was out looking for this car. He scored a good deal on it. He stored it in the back lot. Didn't do anything with it other than make money off of it when he sold it. And that was the intention behind buying it. And that's fine. But you still drove it. I never drove it around on a tank top with a Mr. T starter kit around my neck or any of that Pretty horse close. crap. Not even close, so sir. He still did own it. He still did drive it. He still did like it. Anyway, you so primered yes, this I car. Pull, pulled this around. Circa. That was probably 20 years ago. Well, the good news is not a whole lot of disassembly. No, see? <laughs> see, that's what I mean. That's, that's it's a good already, pop the doors off of it, right? Get it over, get it dipped, bring it back, shoot a little bit of primer, a little epoxy on it, do a little bit of body work. I mean, we're basically done. 
it should be, you know, fairly, you know, decent after the dipping. I mean, once it gets dipped, then we'll know for, for sure. The body guys, they, they do awesome work, and so it's, they got the work cut out for them on this one. The doors and the fenders are coming in from Auto Metal Direct, as awesome. is the shaker hood. Oh, yeah. Very special car. Love to elaborate on it. We need to get it disassembled. Flip flop, flasmop, flippity zoo. I think that the time frame's a little bit unrealistic. Four months versus a couple of years, that's a huge difference. So, I mean, I think if everything runs smoothly like it should, and yeah, it should I be mean, okay, but yeah. yeah, I'm definitely nervous. Like a Two words. Ferrari. Two words. Yeah, he is a man. Oh, I know, I like his ideas on this one. Firepower. Firepower. So you're really not gonna elaborate on this car outside of firepower? No, uh, here's the deal. And this is just between you and me because we go back 20 years, all right? I am sworn to secrecy. That's the truth. I cannot talk about any more than to say what code project name it has, which is Operation Firepower, and that we need it done. The first hemispherical engines built by Chrysler from 1951 to 1958 were known as the Chrysler Firepower engines. Before long, each Chrysler division except Plymouth had their own unique version of the hemispherical engine. Chrysler and Imperial continued using the Firepower name. DeSoto referred to theirs as the Fire Dome, and Dodge's smaller version was known as the Red Ram. In 1964, Chrysler released their hemispherical engine's second generation with the 426 Hemi. These were the first Chrysler engines officially designated with the trademarked Hemi name. Due to the power, weight, and sheer size, they became known as the Elephant Engine. Also, small block Chevy engines were called Mouse Engines, and the Chevy Big Blocks were known as Rat Engines. So, the Elephant seemed to logically follow. With Hemi becoming iconic in the culture of speed and performance, the now humbled appellation Firepower drifted into obscurity. No, fire. gentlemen, I think we fire. are ready to let this down. Everything's done on the bottom side. I think yeah. you guys have gotten all the information you're going to need to get out of this fire kid. What does talk to tell my you engines? What does talk to my engines? Ule ubu se abeswa se swa. Coming down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No. It's always interesting to see what comes back from the dipper. You've seen them when they come in. Boy, they look great when they leave and they come back and they look like Swiss cheese. We're hoping for the best, but expecting the worst, because we always do. Yeah. <laughs> They're taking the fuel tank filler out. I'm going to move this car outside. We'll have to sweep it out, kind of pressure wash it, knock the big stuff off it, and it's ready to go to the dipper. Uh, the fenders we're not going to use. The doors, I'm going to send those to the dipper as well. So when they come back, I can choose between the Auto Metal Direct doors and those doors, make a decision on which ones I want to go on the car. Uh, otherwise, this thing's ready to ship out. Good job, guys. Fast work. See, I cut my hand really bad. Let me see. Let me see how bad it is. I don't want to show no, everybody. No, let me see. Well, you told me you have a weak stomach. He's a okay, paramedic. I wanna, I'm not a paramedic. Let oh, me see. Sorry. You want to see it? Yep. Just take a look. I almost puked. Okay, well, don't look at it. Okay. How bad is it? <laughs> what a sissy. You just flipped me, you <laughs> yeti? <laughs> Mm -mm. No, a fly yeah. landed on you. It was, you. Did you see how, that was huge. I'm surprised you could get stitches. <laughs> You're stupid. You're All right, uh, so Mike, yeah. should we get this on the rollback? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Well, it had cauterized, now I'm back, now I'm back to dying again. Any luck. Here's why the ghouls probably won't get canned this week. Dave, Alyssa, and even Mark helped make some much needed progress on the Phantom Cuda. With locks, back glass, heater box, and dash installed, this legendary GYC icon is nearing the finish line. Will and the body shop prepped and primed the Superbird tribute car. Mark exercised a demon to the dipper and exercised a little himself too when he and Royal took their friend's old Dodge Power Wagon off-road and through their old stomping grounds. And with Father's Day upon them, Alyssa and Will conspire to surprise Mark with a piece of his past, presenting him with his long lost first love, a burnt orange 1970 Charger with a white vinyl top. Well, sort of. Hey, Dad. Happy Hi, Father's Day. Thank you. Give hey, me sweetie, a hug. Bye. How are you doing? You're it's your day. <laughs>
<laughs> Happy, Father's Happy Father's Day. Day to me. How you doing, yeah, babe? I'm doing good. Good, good. Excited. I got you something. I'm just doing my tutorial right now online. A lot of people asking about Mopar questions and stuff like that. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. What's up? I have a gift for you. Oh, what is it? Well, follow me. I'll show you. Oh Lord. Are you ready? Yes. What's happening? We're going. Just okay. follow me. Okay. No, okay. you. This is a gift. Yeah. Of course you're gonna be yeah, happy. It's a Will gift. help me out well, with why this is we'll as help well. Him. Because we're brother and sister. Yeah, okay. Because we figured we'd do, you know, something for our dad for Father's Day. So, <laughs> Alyssa came to me with this idea. I don't, I don't know what the crazy walk is for. That's uh, a new walk just... I'm working on. You're gonna have to do. People are gonna request that later. Father's Day. For the man who has everything. I think we did good. It's in here. It's in here. Serious. So. You want to explain oh, yeah. everything? What or... is it? You guys don't do anything sweet. This is yeah, some bag do. over the head, okay. banana in the <laughs> tailpipe. We know how long you have been looking for that rusted up box you had in high school. That brown turd on yes. the top, in the stripe. Yes. You put out tons of requests asking for help. For nine years. For nine years. XP 29 LOG 118312. Yeah. That car, yep. Yes. You found it? And turn around. Face well, there's the no way. I don't want to get caught. Don't look. Are you ready, Dad? Not yet. Oh, God. I don't like snakes or anything weird. There's no snakes. Weird. No. We would like to present to you. Yeah. Your car. Your car. That you had in high school. That is exact replica <sighs> and the closest we figure we can ever get to your car. So I think it's pretty good. <laughs> I didn't know what they were going to do with the trailer. I mean, it's my trailer. I know what's in it. It should be a car in there. So this was great. I got to say, they. They got me on this one. This truly was the banana in the tailpipe gag. A guy had reached out to us that builds these. That's actually. This was a 70 Charger RT, and he had to custom make it to the baseline 70 Charger oh for you. Oh gosh. And he actually had the same problems that we have painting the cars 15 times to get it right. Wow, it's got the wood grain wheel on it. It's the automatic on the floor, non AC. Isn't that amazing? Do you see the little license plate? It says Graveyard Cars. Oh my gosh. Okay. I knew the bottom of my car like I knew the bottom of my palm. I bet you do. Okay. <laughs> no, it was something Alyssa told me earlier. Sexual? No. no. <laughs> wow. 383, single exhaust, two barrel, L code. This is incredible. Uh, I, I didn't realize there was anybody out there making stuff like that. Same exact seat belts. Oh, that's funny. Look at that. Wow, did he do a good job or what? That's a spitting image of my original car. Okay, that's <laughs> gotta be Royal Seats Me Off or something. I bought that, I bought that air cleaner <laughs> over at Brooks Auto Parts back in 1978. <laughs> that was cool, man. Oh my gosh, look at that. And that'll be a, a talisman, if you will, in my, sorry, big words for the camera boys. Uh, this will be cherished in my office uh, and, and I'll always remember you and, and Will going out of your way to and also help John. make sure it's done. John, I mean, this is all possible and I wanna say a huge thank you to him. Um, we couldn't have done it without you. Happy so, Father's Day. Uh, Happy this Father's is Day. really cool. Thank you, honey. That's really neat. And Will helped me too. That's actually good, good man. Thank you, buddy. I'm glad you like it. Did you paint it? No, he painted it two or three times because, and they actually had to order special colors in to make this color. He, I mean, it's the same problem we have now. He painted this? Yeah. It's the same problem we have now he had building this. It's a nope. beautiful paint job. See if he's looking for a job. Look around. Oh <laughs> Are you kidding? Dude, look <laughs> down the side of it. It's like a sheet of glass. You know, I'm taking the thing <laughs> It's crazy how you day. never had any friends. Great Father's Day. Now smell that passenger seat. Oh, f No. Are we done? <laughs> <laughs> Are we good? This is my baby. All right, let's go get it in your office before something happens to it. Here I am driving down the gut. Oh, God. Here we go. All right, 29th Street, Mark. All right, I'll stop right here. Yeah. Hey, Sally. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Mindy. Hey, Brandy. Hey, what's going on over there? Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah, well, I don't need all these panties. I'll put them back here in my back pocket. <laughs> Collecting them as I go down the road. Whoa, reach out there, you bald son of a... And you grab a panty. He was bald back then? That's too? what I was just going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I started really young, huh? He was bald when he was a sperm. Oh, God. We can't use any of that. 